Welcome to Learn from the Experts, presented to you by Women's Business Owner Alliance of Pioneer Valley, where over 100 women come together to help each other grow their businesses. And today we're thrilled to have Cindy as our guest. Cindy? Hi, I'm Cindy Sheridan Murphy, and I am founder of Thrive Through Cancer Academy where I assist women and family members on going on the other side of cancer to go back and have a more fulfilling life after cancer. Wow, that's amazing. Cindy, thank you, and I'm glad you're here. Uh, I'm Ida Tassinari with Real Living Realty Professionals. So what made you decide to put yourself out there and basically share to the world your experiences? Yeah, it was really um, a life-changing thing for for myself and my family is I, you know, I tell people it's like July 3rd, 2014, everyone's getting ready for the 4th of July holiday. And for myself, I found a lump in my breast. I'd been swimming, running, kind of hanging out. By the time I went to the doctors the next day, it was the size of an orange. Oh, wow. So it was such a dramatic, you know, change, but you know, for me, I really started to talk because I wish I had gotten these questions answered when I was going through things. So I really wanted to help others do it. Um, I had been a sports coach for years. I was a weight management coach. I coached um, one guy to complete his first Ironman, which even that is just like the running part alone is a whole marathon. I worked with a woman who had lost over um, 85 pounds. She was over 400 pounds. Oh. The doctor wouldn't let her get pregnant. Well, wouldn't assist her with medications. So we worked together. She lost the weight. She had a great, healthy baby boy. So when I found this, you know, I, I, you know, done weight management. I had done a triathlon. You know, I had done sports, but I couldn't outrun. I couldn't out swim. I couldn't out bite cancer. So for me, it was looking to see as like, you know, things I wish I had known. Now, did you feel that your doctors pointed you and gave you um, options of support groups in this area to deal with the emotional end of uh, being diagnosed with cancer? I, I think to a degree the doctors, like, their hands are tied. It's like they do their job. They did a fantastic job. I ended up going where we thought it was all contained. It was going to be like a 10-day surgery, you know, have a mastectomy, you're going to have reconstruction, everything's fine found out went into my lymph nodes. So the transition changed from, I say, six weeks to 13 months. So with the doctors, I think, you know, I really believe my doctors did their job. They got me healthy again. But what happens is you go every day, um, every day for almost the last six weeks, and then you're done. And they say, okay, congratulations, we'll see you in three months. And it's almost like, when now what do I do? And that's where I really felt lost, was that's when I felt I hit rock bottom. And really researching, finding out a lot of other women and men do the same thing. It's like that safety net's gone, now what do I do? Right. right. That's crazy. And I think there must be a feeling of losing control. And it is. It was, you know, all of a sudden you're saying, like, I now have to accept help from other people. Well, as women, aren't we the do-it-all, end-all, do-it-all? We're just so used to doing everything that... When we become vulnerable and say, like, I need help now, I don't really know how to do this, you know, that was a really tough part was asking for help. So oh, if sure. I came to you, Cindy, and I told you that I was just recently diagnosed with some form of cancer, what would your best advice be to me or anyone in that yeah, situation? Yeah, is really look, look to support groups, but can't, like more cancer survival programs. Like for myself, being an athlete, I was introduced to Dragon Rays, which is a boating team down, you know, right in Springfield. And you're with other 20, 20 other cancer survivors, women, and then supporters. So we have two boats. We, so you're with those people, so you get to talk to them and see signs on the other side. So I always say is get into survivorship programs. Don't try to do it yourself, you know, because the Internet can really clog your brain. Yes. Oh, definitely. sure. You know, it can scare you. Oh, definitely, you definitely. Know? So when you looked for information about uh, the types of breast cancer, which there's more than one type of breast cancer. Yes. And how did you and your physician come up with the best treatment plan for your particular case? Yeah, you know what? The physicians now, I find, are just, I really give a lot of credit to the physicians. I was right here at Bay State. 
was it was almost like a, a checkbox, like, okay, if your tumor is this size, it leads to this option. If your tumor is this size, this is the option. So as you start answering the questions and you circle it, it kind of comes down to what your best option is. For me, it was a mastectomy because it was, like I said, the size of an orange. So it was already grown that aggressive that we knew we had to get it out. So that was what we knew. But then we worked um, really closely with diagnosing um, what's the best treatment for implants because there's three different types of implants. So it was like, which one fits you the best with your lifestyle? You know, so that's what um, I was given a nurse navigator. Oh. And that was what I thought was great is the doctor, they did their job, but then I did have a nurse navigator. And one thing I work with people, and back to your first question, is when they're first diagnosed, was to get a support team. Who's your support team? Like my sister was my advocate. She read everything for me. She she worked at the hospital, so she did those things. My husband got the updates out with my kids and, you know, getting it out so I didn't have to deal with that. So basically you formed your own Cindy cancer team. I did. Or anti-cancer team. Yeah, yes. and that's what I like to help people do is it was almost like training for the triathlon. Exactly. Or training for business. It's like, okay, we have to have an action plan. So I tackled cancer that same way. That's, that's a nice way to approach it. And then you understand that you can't every, win every game. So yes. if there is a setback, you just try harder the next time yeah. and continue to keep, his, keep your mind focused on the finish line, which is good health. And that's exactly what we did is we, um, you know, like I said before with doing the triathlon, my husband and I had decided before I was diagnosed to run a half marathon. Now, neither one of us had ever done that, so that was a challenge, but he continued to keep going on and doing that. Oh, awesome. So we had the vision in sight, is now my focus was on him running the half marathon. And uh, one of the weight clients I was working with, she wanted to run her first 5K, so I agreed to run it with her. Perfect. So that was an accomplishment, so that was seeing that vision. That's good. So even on the bad days, it was like, hmm, <clears throat> what's the vision? Right. You know? And then as it turned out, we ended up on the front page of the Hartford newspaper, bald and running and a rainy day. So you can look back at it and see that and see how rewarding it is. Right, that's great. Now, Marianne, as a hairdresser, uh, and she mentioned the word bald, and as a vain woman, uh, that's always been my worst fear is to get some diagnosis diagnosis that I would be losing all of my hair. I mm -hmm. should be worrying about dying, but as a woman, that's such a serious, serious uh, mm -hmm. topic. Have you had women that yeah, have come I've in? I've had several of my clients come in, and, and that was a time they said they didn't get up that upset during the diagnosis because they felt positive or even the treatment, but when they came in just to get their head shaved because their hair was falling out so mm. much, that was a moment that they broke down and cried. And it's so an that's emotional. like really it's, yeah, you know, that's and that's really when I talk scary. about the vulnerability, it's, you know, the emotions of losing hair. I was a mess. Before it, we went to get the wig fitted, and all I did was cry. Yeah. Right. And then when I, you know, they warn you, they tell you this, you go in that shower, and those first clumps come mm -hmm. out. It's like this panic. And, oh, yeah. And things like I wish I had known was, like, it hurt. Mm. And you hear I've it, I'm that, sure, a yeah. lot was my head hurt. It was just my hair was a little longer and curly. So I went right over to um, my niece who shaved it, which helped. First my husband and my son tried to, but then, you know, it's like, okay, now we have to go to a hairdresser and really, like, get it done. Right. <laughs> and it was. And once it was gone, it's almost like they had to come out of the follicles. Then it was okay. Mm -hmm. But losing it. Yeah. And That's I really, um, I wasn't okay with it. So I, I realized that to be sympathetic and empathetic to other people. It's like, I had a friend who put a picture of me on Facebook, good old Facebook, bald, and I guess in some ways she liberated me. Mm. Because first I was like appalled, like how could she put that on there? But then after it was like, you know what? And I never wore a wig. They bothered me, mm. but I wore head pieces. Mm -hmm. I wore a lot of hats, <coughs> mostly for everybody else. Yeah. It wasn't right. so much for me, but it was, you didn't want to look like a cancer patient. Right. right, exactly. But I think what you're doing and trying to do is let people know that 
you're going through treatment yes. and you are strong and you're going to be stronger to be able to con conquer this. Yes. And you don't want to have to be perceived as, as um, a victim or someone that is, you know, suffering. And by doing that, so, and I think by wearing a scarf on your head, it also makes the other people more comfortable. Because I know myself, when I see someone that has an obvious issue of whatever it may be, mm. It's hard either to look or not to look, and you know you really don't want to offend anybody. Mm -hmm. So just make you as average as everybody else and blend in. And I think that's what it does. It helps you feel like, okay, I'm okay with this. So somebody knows, yes, you're going through cancer, but I'm okay with this. Right, you know, exactly. it's something that happened to me. It doesn't define me. Exactly. You know, and that's really to kind of get that was, you know, I'm not working as a dental hygienist anymore. So, okay, now I'm going to reinvent myself. And a lot of people I work with, they find that they're in that phase of either they don't want to go back to doing what they were doing, mm. they want, or they can't go back to doing what they were doing. So it's a transition of saying, okay, so what do I do next? So let's yeah. create a more purposeful life of once, this, once you've gone through this. So how did you find yourself uh, building up your physical strength? I, what I did was I, I really worked with a, a health coach on 10, 10 Steps to Nourish Yourself. So finding it wasn't just, you know, food and the water and what we put in our bodies and the exercise, but it was, what was I doing nice for myself? Was I doing any routines? You know, I would teach weight management clients to journal so I could see what they were eating and they'd be conscientious of it. So I started journaling about your every day, creating some habits to say, you know what, this is just a page in a journal. Like, I can look back on this on a bad day, write everything out, but then if you look back and you can see, like, that was just a page, I thought. Like, that was a chapter, it's done. Look at where I am this year. Right. So it's really kind of nice to see later on. And exactly. Pay so attention. A, and as you're doing that, you can look forward to the next chapter of your life is yeah. what you're trying to start now, I can see. Yeah, and, you know, so to stay active, was some days I just put my sneakers on. And that was as much as I felt like doing. But I would have water and say, like, even a Dixie cup of water, you had to get to go to the bathroom. Mm. So you're, maybe you didn't go on the treadmill, maybe you didn't get out and do anything, but you did mentally, you got yourself up and dressed. So mm -hmm. I would really encourage people to just try to get dressed. Mm -hmm. Now in your groups, have you encountered uh, men that have had breast cancer? I've predominantly worked with women and I haven't, you know, men, you know, are, you know, they're susceptible to it. But I just focus mostly with women because I know the hormones and we know the ups and downs and we're the, the ones that just try to do everything. Right. So I think that's where, you know, to try to help them to say and it's okay. And men are not sharers to speak of. No. You know, so they tend to keep their feelings inside. And they're, it's different for them. So if th I haven't worked with men going through cancer, but s family members, you know, mm -hmm. having my son and my husband, you know, I do a whole talk on family life with cancer, what it was like for them. I might know I'm having a bad day. To them, they're scared. They're not sure how exactly. I'm feeling. I could say, I, you know what, I, I just need to lay down today. Mm -hmm. right. So I think they have another avenue, and they don't share a lot. Right. Do you, now, running your business, do you do groups? Do you do talks? Do you do one-on-one -on -one coaching? How do you? Do I do all of that. Oh, okay. Yep. So I like to do workshops where I bring the cancer survivors and their loved ones where it's an interactive, and I've done it with music with a woman who put a song to the video I did earlier called Each Moment Where a Lie, so that mm -hmm. as they're there, they leave with an action plan, not just go and hear a lecture. Mm -hmm. So you go and hear a lecture, and you're like, all right, that was good, but now what? So we do a writing workshop of, you know, incorporating some meditation, journaling, mm. things that, you know, they can go home with some steps so they can implement right away. Right. And that's why I feel they feel more empowered. Definitely. And, and it definitely is a time that you want to feel more empowered. Yeah, you don't want to just that. go and say, all right, now I'm going to go listen about this, and I'm going to listen about that. It's like, all right. And I, and I like what you said earlier, that it's something that happened to you, but it doesn't define you. Yeah. I think that is huge. It took a while to really get that to say, you know what? I'm on the other side now. Yeah. And they will be too. Right. Now, do you also address um, the family members and how they feel? because that's so important. And mm -hmm. if, like you said, men really don't want to share their feelings and they're scared. Yes. And being scared comes out in different way in different people. Mm. 
And in your group, do you try to discuss the, the family member that's going through the challenges? Yeah, you know what we do is um, helping the cancer, the cancer survivor basically identify what they need so okay. that they can share it. Because a lot of times, people want to bring you food. They want to bring this. They don't realize, like, in my house, my daughter has a peanut allergy or different things. Like, so you want to identify that. So once you could get clear, it helps exactly. your family get clear. And then yeah. they can see it. Say, so like, okay, I can see that you're really angry today. But I think that really makes a difference for the family members. I think so. Because right. if you don't ask for what you want, you're not going to get it. Yeah. And sometimes you don't know what you want. You're like, I, I don't know. I never went through this before. Right. And you know? like you said, everybody's writing their own book. Everyone is. And that's what I found was it's almost like taking advice from a woman about raising your children who's never had children. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you get a lot of advice from people who've never had cancer, and you're saying, eh. so that's what I want to be. It's like, I've been there. I've done it. You can do it, too. Right. You know, get that advice. Mm -hmm. well, thank you, Cindy. Well, we're about to end, but is there one thing that you'd like to say that we haven't asked you about? I think, you know, my biggest message is for everybody is to live each moment we're alive because you just don't know. and it, That's great. And for the cancer survivors, it's like, it is a new day, it's a new norm. Exactly. So live it that way. Right. Well, Cindy, you've been a joy to come and join this yes. afternoon with us. And in you, the audience, would like to find any more about the WBOA Women's Business Owners Alliance, you can go to the website, wboa.org, and also find some more information about our lovely guests. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank it's been you. a pleasure. And you were Thank very you. brave. Thank, Thank you. you. Good job.